listeners. So uh, this is um, today is um, the first day of our second week of uh, Huato retreat um, and of 2023. The reason we in this retreat is uh, to help us to get familiar with the uh, the practice. Uh, for the beginners, um, we need to uh, know why we practice the two uh, Buddha Dharma. And uh, there are some beginners um, who maybe just want to uh, find out uh, what is uh, the Huato meditation is. But the the main teaching of the Buddha, the main uh, Buddha's intention is to uh, be like Buddha, uh, which means to awaken. In order to awake, you need to believe that, you need to trust that you and the Buddha fundamentally are the same from uh, superpower to uh, wisdom are, are the same. And you and the Buddha are equally, uh, not less or more, uh, are the same. Uh, the reason we get uh, blockage by the ignorance uh, and we're not able to see our awakening nature or Buddha nature is because of our self-attachment and false mind and distinction, separation, discrimination, uh, self-attachment and uh, relative uh, duality uh, is, is not originally in our Buddha nature, but uh, because a false mind creates all the difference uh, and all the uh, false uh, thoughts. So in the one of the sutra, um, the Buddha represent uh, the our sick eyes. Uh, we may see uh, some elusive flowers in the space, uh, in all over the space. So uh, we uh, want to get rid of the elusive flower in the space. But uh, you need to cure your sickness of your eyes. You don't have to go get rid of all the elusive flowers in the space, which which are not real uh, because of our sick eyes. So we we the reason is we we don't know that we have a, a sick eyes, and we try to. Um, we, we try to argue with all the people that we see the uh, elusive flowers in the space. So, um, therefore, the Buddha tried to create uh, different different skillful means to, to guide uh, practitioners. So slowly we are able to see the the two. So um, we practice this meditation is to help us to uh, like cure the sick eyes. And when you, your eyes fully recover from the the illness then you don't see the elusive uh, flowers in a space. So um, because of our false mind, uh, therefore it creates all the sufferings, all the self-attachment. 
So this is the the Hua to or this uh, Zen practice method is basically the the medicine to cure that uh, false mind, and we need to uh, practice regularly in order to to cure uh, our sick mind. Uh, there actually originally there is no uh, sufferings, no um, birth and death. Uh, but because of our, our false minds, it creates all that. So, um, so we just need to practice uh, by uh, asking the question clearly, urgently, um, and somehow you're gonna create a doubt uh, and we gonna slowly familiar with the um the the auto question and the doubt and the doubt is gonna the doubt is gonna lead us to the the head of uh, the the word or the thoughts before the thoughts, before the, the head, uh, before the words. So, so we, because we see everything, uh, right now we see everything is real. And we trade up, we sacrifice our body, our time, our life to get something uh, and attach to something uh, are not real. Uh, actually, it's not only in this life, but we have been doing this for many lives before. So we use the, the false mind to live our lives. And that's why it, it's leading us to the wrong path all the time. So all uh, of us human beings, we, we use this, uh, we have this tendency to... Uh, the words uh, as uh, supposed uh, from your own thoughts, uh, but it, they are not real. So the, all these things um, are the flash of the lightning, um, the bubbles. They are uh, so impermanent. So from the from the goddess realms. Um, Sentient beings, there they able to see us. They they see us uh, living in a very uh, superficial level. But from their point of view, from their goddess uh, realms, the folks up there they able to live in a very subtle. Uh, and they, if they want to eat something. Uh, they just think about it and they they feel they feel uh, they have the food uh, already. So from the goddess uh, goddess uh, realm perspective, they see us. You know, like we see the the pigs. Um, the pigs they they live in um, the way that you know very dirty. We can feed them dirty food. They eat dirty food. Uh, so the God, these realms, they see human just like that way. And for the, for us, when we see the ocean, uh, beautiful, right? But actually, the the sentient being from uh, uh, hungry ghosts, they see the ocean as uh, the ocean of the blood, red blood. So uh, it depends on our individual karmic um, level. Uh, then we're able to understand the true, the reality, uh, like the cell nature. Uh, so it's um, only our practice will help us. Eventually, it's going to help us to see the true nature. And we're able to see ourselves uh, being up and down in the samsara. Uh, 
or in the the sick realm of uh, birth and death uh, for so many lives not only this life but many lives before that and uh, we should not waste our opportunity here to uh, help us to lead ourselves out of the circle of birth and death so uh, everything we uh, do or live in our daily life we continue to do that but in the meantime we're gonna uh, add our practice along with that in our life um, so that way we're gonna build our momentum uh, for the practice and that's what I want to share today with you so we what we should do uh, what we need to do uh, in our practice and in our life. So right now there is someone uh, want to ask the question. Uh, Namo Sakya Muni Buddha. Uh, I heard one of uh, the practitioners say that um, sometimes his or her practice is really, really deep. Uh, the practice is really deep, but it has less doubt. So uh, I'm not sure whether this is uh, correct or not. Uh, when you practice and you know you have uh, doubt or no doubt, and when you see that you know that you know uh, your practice, uh, practice here is doubt or no doubt. Uh, so is that correct? Yeah. Are you uh, Miss Ying's mom? So, like, when uh, I I'm gonna give you this situation uh, scenario. Probably you love your your daughter very much. Um, when you love your daughter, you don't have to say it out loud. It's already uh, originate in your heart and you always love her if you don't see her you also love her and when she goes far away you're gonna miss her you love her even more so that that, that is the, the, the love between mom and daughter so um the, the, the love between mothers and daughter uh, and you might have a lot of concern for her uh, very deep in your heart. So this is the same thing with uh, the practice. When you have a strong and deep practice, um, like the, the way you love your daughter, so um, your doubt is going to build stronger. And you're, when you able to do that, that means you maintain the doubts. Uh, because our human beings, we have this tendency of uh, distinction uh, between this and that. So this is uh, create the, the, the confidence in yourself and you have a strong determination for birth and death and the practice is really close to you it's very um, going uh, deep in your your heart like the way you love your daughter uh, so it's already in your heart um, so it's not come from outside but come from inside uh, so same thing with the practice when you hear your daughter maybe get sick, you start to worry about her. So it's come from love. Uh, and you have that strong emotion and feelings for her. Uh, that's um, you and your daughter are, uh, are one. So in the same thing with the practice, uh, the, the practice is basically uh, you have this strong determination for resolving birth and death 
therefore you want to dedicate uh, your practice uh, so go beyond the distinction um, so then you can have the doubt uh, practice asking the question so asking why you want to uh, practice why you um, why you have a lot of suffering in life uh, why you have uh, a lot of conflicts affliction uh, in life and uh, from uh, young to old um, so why we still have uh, a lot of uh, suffering and even the rich people they, they still have uh, suffering they cry as well as uh, the poor people so everybody have a sick body and everybody's going to die and 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 if we we're not able to practice the body is going to try us uh, in a very uh, difficult situation and beside that we have uh, the natural disaster and so on um, it's going to drive us uh, to the depth of suffering and we have been doing this not to this life we have been uh, done this for many lives before and we even in you know the the hell realms we even in the the uh, the animals realms and hungry ghost realms and Therefore, we, we need to um, rely on the teaching of the Buddhas and the patriarchs, and we should um, take refuge in the, true, the three jewels and our wise friends. And also, we need to um, choose the practice that is... Um, going to help us to let go of self-attachment and that's the true Buddha Dharma. So when we practice, we uh, sometimes we think we, we are doing the right thing on the path. Uh, but so um, the, the self-attachment is originate from the ignorance. So that's uh, represent the uh, the, the pole, right? The pole or the anchor. So that is the uh, original of ignorance. And the, the cows have been tied to that pole. And that cows only walk around that anchor or the pole. It cannot go outside of that. So it's the same thing with our uh ignorance uh our mind is always go back into the circle so um because of the cell attachment so this um doubt is gonna lead us out of this um uh, cell attachment and it's gonna lead us out of the uh the original ignorance or primal ignorance so the um the awakening is gonna awakening is not something you find it's basically when you fill up the balloon the balloon is gonna blow uh, so nothing to find it's just uh, naturally and uh, automatically re uh, discover your own uh, Buddha nature or your cell nature so uh, because of um, we use uh, able to use uh, the true wisdom the true wisdom is gonna help us um, help us to uh, use the, uh, the 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 prasya or the wisdom from that discovery so in this practice we 
not distinct bit, uh, in anything. So uh, Zen master Xuan Yan, he said that five, five to seven months, uh, it takes five to seven months to, to uh, practice uh, diligently. So you're able to uh, correct it. Otherwise, we just recite uh, the question. We're not going to create any doubts out of it. We just basically very um, in a in a dualistic way. We recite the the question, but we're not get anywhere anywhere. So um, because of our uh, dualistic mind, uh, it's, it keep us in that pattern. So this practice is not going to suppress uh, anything um, or try to push anything away. And if we're not able to create any doubts, uh, you continue to ask the question and you keep going at it all the time. Um, and you're not trying to um, add too much um, effort. You don't have to add too much effort, but you keep the consistency. You keep con uh, your consistency is going to help help you to um, maintain the doubt. So in this practice, when you uh, practice, you can study as well. When you have uh, a little bit of free time, you can ask the question. And when you study, uh, you can study. But, but when you have a little time, you can ask, uh, ask a question. So you can ask the question anytime. So you're not try too hard. Uh, you, don't, uh, you, you don't set your mind into uh, a very um, ambitious way or um, try to get something. Uh, we're not trying to get anything. So we just um, practice in a very uh, continuously, um, naturally, uh, as much as possible. So we're not uh, avoid life. We wish to uh, go along with life. We still uh, live with everyone. We still um, basically continue the same as as uh, before. So we just um, right now doesn't matter what happened. We we just continue to practice. We just, we don't have to suppress anything. Which we're not going to chase after anything. Just basically ask the question, create the doubt uh, without um, get anything, anything to, uh, there's nothing to achieve, there's nothing to gain, uh, and there's nothing to fear. So, so when you say that, oh, I need to practice deeply so I can get something, then you should say, oh, that's okay. There's nothing to gain and return to uh, practice normally. So, uh, and for an example, maybe you experience a, a, a difficult uh, situation with your uh, family members and uh, it's very difficult, very emotional. And at that moment, you just, you know, practice. You're going to ask the question. Go along. Go along with the emotion. Um, or maybe at that moment, you got really mad or you got really angry. You just uh, practice along with it. So you, you're not going to suppress. You're going to. Uh, suppress that anger, you're not going to suppress that emotion or anything. You just basically allow yourself to ask the question naturally. So uh, even when you are busy in your daily life, you can ask too. You can ask the question. 
it's just like your breath. You 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 have to breathe all the time. So your practice is the same thing. You just breathe along with life, um, and you don't have to uh, be fear of uh, anything. So does that does that make sense? Uh, yes. Uh, I uh, I'm really appreciate for your explanation. Uh, I, I will try my best to practice. So whatever uh, whatever you said, I have tried. And sometimes I get uh, uh, emotional with my family members, uh, get mad, angry with, with them. But uh, when I uh, try to practice along with it, and maybe it works for me. Uh, and I also want to ask you sometimes so that way you you can correct my practice. Okay, so try your best. I want to ask the next question. Namo Sakya Muni Buddha, dear monks and nuns and all practitioners. I would like to ask uh, Zen Master Sun Chi a question. Um, so, uh, back home in your uh, Cao Meng uh, Zen temple in China, um, when uh, have you ever experienced any young uh, teens, like 15 years old or so on? Uh, have, have they been to the Zen center and practice? And how do you uh, help them uh, with the Huato practice, how do you how do you guide them, and how you help them to raise uh, the doubt? And uh, anyone from uh, thirty years old to forty years old uh, been to your Zen center in China? Uh, this is not just about the age. The age is not a problem. Uh, if they able to encounter with uh, uh, this Zen practice in this life, but they they probably already had uh, encounters in this uh, last life. And, and probably they already have the seeds uh, in many lives. And uh, we should not think uh, if, uh, I mean, as they, as they young age, uh, they, they don't have the potential. Just like um, Zen, uh, the patriarch, Sikh patriarch, Pei Nan, uh, he didn't know anything. So um, it's not based on the age. Um, so in Zen uh, tradition, it's not just uh, in the world uh, school, uh, so that people learn uh, by age. But in the Zen tradition, anyone can learn. Uh, they have the same potential. So we just need to help them to uh, support uh, their uh, practice. So it's just uh, take time to uh, 
slowly um, understand and then and then uh, do the practice. Uh, if there's a, ch a, ch a three years old uh, kid and COE is better than me, I would follow them and, and ask questions uh, and learn from, from, from that kid. <laughs> and so we should not... Um, we slowly uh, help them sow the seed. Um, and there are two kids uh, who've been here uh, practicing with us. Um, we're going to help them and guide them. It's a good uh, karma for, for, for them. So we slowly help them sow this, the good seed. And one at a time, we're going to help them uh, awaken. Just uh, like when we try to make tofu, if we uh, we make uh, make the tofu in in a hurry, uh, probably it's gonna mess up. So it just take time to nurture them. Uh, so we just need to return to the practice ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> so uh that's about the uh uh how to uh make or eat uh, the the tofu uh, in the Kelman uh, Zen temple in China, that's I came from. Uh, there is um, the triangle uh, area. Uh, the there is a guy. Um, he uh, he's a, a a tofu vendor. He. He basically he make he make tofu and uh, sell to everyone. Uh, and he rely on this business to make a living. And um, people try to encourage him to go to the Zen, to my Zen temple, to uh, do some um, the, uh, do some merits uh, to the uh, to volunteer. So there's uh, a way that he need to uh, go to my Zen temple. Um, he has to go. He had to cross the the, the aisle. Uh, the basically almost like a peninsula, peninsula. Uh, uh, and uh, he, he just want to offer the my Zen temple uh, nothing else because he doesn't have anything else. So he just want to offer the tofu. Uh, people at the, the Zen temple see his true and sincere heart.
chị chị tạm đi chưa? Tôi tham gia. Nói là thôi bây giờ đêm nay không hãy ở lại đi để cầu cái tối nay mình sẽ cùng nhau và đi đặt thách để xem những cái gì. Ah, and people recommend to him that you should stay. Ah, uh, not not making uh, or go out and sell the tofu. Just stay and do the retreat with us. Uh, and uh, they said that you we we just sit for one incense, one stick of incense. And uh, they uh, they took him to the Zen uh, Zendo, and um, he uh, started do the practice with uh, the rest of the practitioners for one instance. And um, during that during that time, you know. Our temple didn't didn't have the the clock, so we use incense at a as a timer. So this uh, tofu maker, he uh, practiced with us. And he was sitting, and he was thinking about the all the debts uh, he owed, you know in the past 30 years and uh, he during he during his sitting meditation he remember uh, every everyone that he owed the money to and he said that's amazing that I was able to remember everything after one sitting and then uh, whatever he owed uh, people and uh, he uh, he went and uh, paid them back and whoever owe him, uh, he gonna go reclaim his uh, his money. And uh, he was uh, old, and he he passed away. I think. So in. Uh, in his dream, he uh, he saw there's um, a full carriage. Uh, in the carriage, uh, there are young girls and boys. And uh, they invite him to um, uh, they invite him to the party the the event and uh, he followed them and he can continue to uh, go with them in a long in such a long distance and then he went to this house uh, it has a lantern lit in and all these girls and boys they, they said to him come in come in and when he about to enter and when he about to enter the house uh, and the Dharma guard the Dharma got uh, got it uh, hold, hold a big stick and block him not uh, blocking it from into the, the house 
and say, uh, what's going on? I, I am following those kids. Why cannot, why can I not come in? I said that because you already sat at the Kaomeng Zen Temple one instance. Uh, he said that only one instance and I already invited a party. And he was uh, disappointed and went home. And when he went home, he opened his eye and he woke up from his dream. And people was crying over his body because he, because he already passed. People, people in his family crying because uh, he passed away. And when he uh, returned from his coma, uh, his family was so happy. And he was, that's an amazing dream. And uh, he asked his uh, family members to uh, go to that uh, location according to his dream. Uh, and people went there and returned and told him that location uh, and told him that the, the, the family has the, the mother pig already gave birth gave birth to uh, the ba baby pig, the piglets. Uh, he said uh, he was very fortunate that he sat in a one uh, instant in the Zendo. Uh, Zendo, uh, and that's why he wasn't reborn as a pig. So from that uh, moment, he dedicate um, his time, the rest of his time to go to my Kaomeng uh, Zendo temple uh, to practice. Otherwise, you know, uh, my life or his life uh, could be in uh, reborn into the animal realms. So that, that is the true story. Uh, from my Zen temple. Uh, have you heard of this story? Uh, yes. Um, my, my Zen master told me this story and this story he told is uh, it's kind of sort of, sort of version. So uh, he said that um, because of his um, merits, he was able to avoid re reborn into uh, in, reborn in into the uh, a pig family. So he barely, actually he has his heart you know, uh, direct to the the three jewels. So that's why he. Um, he was a and uh, he's supposed to be born into the pig families, but uh, the Dharmagar already blocked him from into reborn into the pig. Uh, our practice, hotel practice, um, how can we compare with like um, the counting breath meditation or vipassana meditation? Uh, 
có thể như là nó hấp dẫn đối với giới trẻ hơn. Uh, to me the uh, the, those uh, methods of practice meditation practice maybe uh, are more more attractive um, to the, um, the to the young generation and the hotto meditation practice probably is not as attractive um, to the young generation. So uh, it, it, I have this concern and and um, a consideration. How can we um, support su support the, the young generation to practice this method? <laughs> Uh, this question is uh, for Sanji uh, Zen Master. Uh, the the Vipassana meditation method is very is very easy to practice. Uh, but uh, the uh, subject and object, the dualistic method, uh, is uh, is still there uh, because of the breath, the subject an object uh, it's not uh, their practice is not uh, good or not good um, but the Zen practice we directly go into the original mind the true nature of the mind is non uh, duality uh, no subject and object um the vipassana practice uh is very easy to fall into the duality um it's easy to achieve the um the tranquility equanimity and whatnot from the vipassana practice but this practice is not able to lead the uh, practitioner to awakening. Uh, and and I have been uh, interact with a lot of people from this uh, tradition. Uh, I feel that they, they have a strong attachment um, to the practice. And they think um, that the longer you sit um, in the Vipassana, uh, the better. Uh, and it's, it's basically this something to achieve, something to gain. And uh, this is the practice that um, in the Zen in the Zen tradition that is said that um, it stop all the um, it stop all the thoughts. But when you stop practice, all the thoughts gonna flood back in. And they might find the calmness uh, in their mind. Uh, like I said, uh, the tranquility and equanimity, uh, that's the fruition <laughs> from the uh, Vipassana practice. So, uh, so if practitioner if they already have an uh, understanding of the Mahayana teaching uh, or sudden teaching or the Prasna teaching uh, is gonna gonna be uh, completely different from the Vipassana practice. 
So it's just like people they uh, practice in the Mahayana tradition when they recite recite uh, one word of the sutra and bow one time. And uh, when they bow down to each word from the text, and then they recite another uh, sentence uh, in their mind. Uh, may they uh, alleviate or let go of the self, self attachment of the subject and object. Uh, there is uh, no real self. And uh, so um, may I and the Buddha nature uh, the same. And when I um, and the Buddha nature in the in the ten directions basically uh, present or shows in my mind. So this is the the, the stanza, the vow. Um, uh, they have so the seeds of uh, practice. Uh, this method, they may be a uh, they may be awakened from uh, ignorance. So if practitioners uh, have this innate uh, prasna or wisdom uh, in them or in their view and and uh, they're able to uh, practice So when you have this uh, perceptions in the practice uh, and the learning process, they are not the same. And it's going to lead us to the unconventional. And said that if someone, uh, people, they recite the four letter words uh, of the Buddha name and make they uh, able to re, um, be born in the Dharma world. And, and, uh, so if you contemplate deeply in the recite the Buddha name, uh, also have the prasha in in the practice. If you able to practice with that, it's not just about recite the Buddha name, but um, but uh, practitioners should have the uh, prasya uh, view or perspective so they can practice that. So when you have the, the doubts uh, aroused, then you should not do anything else. And some people, they're not able to ra uh, raise the doubts. The Zen master, Kao Feng, Uh, the reason he had many uh, Huato questions. Uh, and in his dream, he was able to uh, practice one of his uh, Huato, I mean, yeah, Huato questions. And when he uh, wake up, Within seven days, he uh, awakened from from that uh, Hato question, and uh, because of the uh, other Zen master uh, sleeping uh, in the same room, and he dropped the the wooden pillow, and uh, 
Then Master Cao Feng, uh, he was awake or oh, enlightened. So we uh, should uh, consider the uh, the question that you uh, you chose. Um, so it will basically help you to create a doubt. Um, how that is um, reciprocal with the practice. Um, just like uh, our teacher Min Ngoc, he usually says this. Uh, we should um, depart from the the subject and object. And the uh, absolute um, view from the from the absolute view, there's no uh, subject and object. And and that's a, the the true prajna, the true nature of prajna. So um, don't you um ignore his teaching that he repeats a lot uh, in the explanation. Uh, because that how you're gonna discover the prasya. So it's going back to the Vipassana practice question that um how can that they, they the Vipassana practitioners improve and move up, move on beyond the Vipassana practice. And the answer is, I haven't heard or I haven't known anyone that able to go be go beyond the Vipassana. They always stay in the Vipassana. And and this is about uh, and the uh, people who practice um, the vipassana and when they fell asleep and somebody used a stick to hit him um, uh, he got really mad so this is just one of an example that he encountered with um, one of the Vipassana practitioners um, because the uh, practice still attends to the self and um, it's create a big self. And uh, when you hit me, I'm going to hit you back. Um, all right, so uh, we are running out of time. Um, so thank you, everyone. Uh, and you have a good day.